as I trust him, as I, I obey to his word, as I submit to him, I experience the beauty of being provided for in a way that is so much better than what I could ever provide on my own because it is according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus that he supplies my needs. What's up? What's up, incredible people? I love you. You matter. You are on purpose and significant and your life is so rich in meaning. And I'm so glad that you are on the Have You Heard podcast. My name is Emma Mae McDaniel and Today, we are going to be talking about how the Lord is our provider, how we lack no good thing in Him, how every day we are given exactly what He needs because He's a good Father who gives good and perfect gifts. So friends, buckle up, get ready to be encouraged, grab your headphones, and let's get into the Word. So if you all have your Bibles, we are going to be mainly in Exodus 16, and I'm going to be reading out of the NLT version and really just reading through the whole chapter and kind of breaking it apart. We'll go to some other scriptures too, but that'll be kind of our main spot that we're hanging out in today. So starting in verse one, before we kick off and start reading it, I want to give a little bit of context. So in chapter 14 of Exodus, that is when God led the people of Israel through dry or through the Red Sea on dry ground safely. And he caused the Egyptians to follow after them and then turned them into confusion and then killed them in the Red Sea. So the Lord revealed his awesome power. He revealed how mighty he is. He revealed how he had set the Israelites apart. He revealed his protection and his provision. And then all of Exodus 15 up until the last handful of verses is the Israelites praising God for his goodness, for his provision, for his might, for his favor, for his grace. Like they are just singing a song unto the Lord. And then we're going to pick up in verse one of chapter 16. It says, then the whole community of Israel set out from Elim and journeyed into the wilderness of Sin, or Sinai, between Elim and Mount Sinai. They arrived there on the 15th day of the second month, one month after leaving the land of Egypt. There, too, the whole community of Israel complained about Moses and Aaron. Like, literally, right there. Can you imagine... Like God has just delivered this whole group of people from slavery, from oppression, from bondage, years of it, led them through the Red Sea on dry ground, literally such a phenomenal miracle representing God, his love for them, his compassion towards them. And then they're complaining. Isn't that so interesting that we, whenever we see the Lord working in our lives or we see him answer a prayer that we've been praying for such a long time and we're crying out praises to him, we're declaring how good he is and we are all about him. And then the next day comes around and we begin to face a circumstance that's difficult. We face a circumstance that we don't necessarily like. We face a circumstance that we don't necessarily understand that's uncomfortable. And then we turn right to complaining. I want to challenge us, and I say us because myself as well, to be be a people who remember how good the Lord is. Let us not forget the benefits of our God. Let us not forget who he is. Let us not forget what he has done. And as we continue to remember how faithful he's been, let us let that deepen our trust so that as days come where there are difficulties, there are uncertainties, there are uncomfortabilities, we are able to approach those things with trust in God and continuing to praise him because we know that he hasn't changed even when our circumstances have. Yet we see here, Literally just in a matter of not even a chapter, the Israelites are now complaining. It says about Moses and Aaron. And this is what they're saying. Verse three, if only the Lord had killed us back in Egypt. That's a pretty heavy statement. They moaned. There we sat around pots filled with meat and ate all the bread we wanted. But now they're telling this to Moses and Aaron. You have brought us into the wilderness to starve us all to death. So they're hungry. And so they're complaining to Moses and Aaron, wishing that they had never even been set free from their slavery from the Egyptians. Verse 4. Then the Lord said to Moses, Look, 
I'm going to bring I'm going to rain down food from heaven for you. You hear that? I'm going to rain down food from heaven for you. The Israelites are literally complaining. They're upset. They're totally, it seems like they're forgetting what the Lord has done. Like it doesn't even matter. Wishing they were back in the place that they were being held in slavery. And yet the Lord, in the midst of their complaining, comes in and says, I'm going to be gracious. And what does that mean? I'm going to give you what you don't deserve. And I'm going to be merciful. What does that mean? I'm not going to give you what you you do deserve. So even in the midst of your complaining, I will be kind to you as your Lord. I just, their lack of trust, the Lord responded to with grace. And I was just so humbled by that. How kind is our God? And he says, each day the people can pick out, can go out and pick up as much food as they need for that day. Each day they were going to be given exactly what they needed. It makes me think of the prayer that Jesus prays whenever the disciples ask him to teach them how to pray. And he literally says, God, give us this day our daily bread. And just the encouraging reminder that every day the Lord provides me with exactly what I need. Yes, I may not know exactly what tomorrow looks like. Yes, I may not know the needs I will have for tomorrow. But I do know... That God tells me to not worry about tomorrow for today has enough troubles of its own. And that in this day, he's going to care for those troubles. In this day, he is going to meet those needs. And if he is the same yesterday, today, and forever, then tomorrow he's going to do the same thing. He's going to meet me there. Isn't that so good? Each day, the people can go out and pick up as much food as they need from that for that day. He says, I will test them in this to see whether or not they will follow my instructions. I just think that's really cool. He's like, I'm going to give them this in, this instruction to go out and get exactly what you need for this day. And I'm testing you to see, are you going to trust me? Are you going to obey me? Do you trust that I'm actually going to provide for your needs? Do you trust me enough to obey what I say and not go beyond or outside of what I'm telling you, thinking that you need to go fend for yourself because I'm just not going to make the cut? Do you actually trust God saying that I'm going to give you what you need when you need it? And therefore, will you obey me out of love for me and trust, trust in me? It says, on the sixth day, they will gather the food, and when they prepare it, there will be twice as much as usual. Verse 6, so Moses and Aaron said to all the people of Israel, by evening you will realize it was the Lord who brought you out of Egypt. In the morning, you will see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaints, which are actually against him, they said, not against us. What have we done that you should complain about us? And I want to pause there, because I love how Moses says He says, by evening, you will realize it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And I just took note. I was like, wow, you will know that the Lord is who he is. You will be reminded of what he's done. You will recall, it will be brought to the forefront of your mind that he is God and that he's brought you from where you've come from. And then it says, in the morning, you will see the glory of the Lord. I see, see, you and I both see whether or not we realize it. We see the glory of the Lord in his provision each and every day through how he provides for me, the breath in my lungs, the food that I'm able to eat, the people that are around me, the ability to wake up in the morning and live another day, the provision of the Lord in the small and the grand things. I'm seeing his glory in that. Continuing on, Moses says, The Lord will give you meat to eat in the evening and bread to satisfy you in the morning, for he has heard your, all your complaints against him. Like I said, what have we done? Yes, your complaints are against the Lord, not us. Then Moses said to Aaron, announce this to the entire community of Israel. Present yourselves before the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole community of Israel, they looked out toward the wilderness. There they could see the awesome glory of the Lord in the cloud. Wow. Then the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the Israelites' complaints. The Lord heard them. I just think that it's those little things. God heard his people. Now tell them, in the evening you will have meat to eat. In the morning you will have all the bread that you want. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. The provision points to the provider. Whenever I see the provision in my life, whenever I see what I'm equipped to do, whenever I see the abilities that I'm given, whenever I see how I'm provided for in my day to day, I am pointed 
to my provider. I am pointed to the one who cares for me and I'm brought a realization that he is the Lord. He is God. That glory belongs to him and I'm able to see that simply in how he provides for me every day. That evening, vast numbers of quail flew in and covered the camp. And the next morning, the area around the camp was wet with dew. When the dew, we're in verse 14. When the dew evaporated, a flaky substance as fine as frost blanketed the ground. The Israelites were puzzled when they saw it. What is it? Then they, they asked each other. They had no idea what it was. And Moses told them, it's the food that God has given you to eat. These are the Lord's instructions. Each household should gather as much as it needs. There we see it again. As much as it needs, God provided. It makes me think of Philippians 4.19. I feel like I quote this verse a lot, but it's been on my heart so much in the last few months that God, he will supply all of your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus according to his storehouse, according to who he is. He provides all of my needs. He provides for me better than I could provide for myself. As I trust him, as I I obey his word, as I submit to him, I experience the beauty of being provided for in a way that is so much better than what I could ever provide on my own because it is according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus that he supplies my needs. He tells them, pick up two quarts for each person in your tent. Verse 17, so the people of Israel did as they were told. Some gathered a lot and some only a little. But when they measured it out, everyone had just enough. Everyone was provided for. I just, I don't know. I just want to really emphasize this point home that whoever is listening to this and is really afraid that they're not going to be provided for if anybody is afraid that they're not going to have enough if anybody is just really afraid that they're not going to be cared for I want to just encourage you in the beautiful reality that God he is many things in one and one of those are that he is a provider he is your provider in him you lack no good thing this is so good Everyone had just enough. Those who gathered a lot had nothing left over. And those who gathered only a little had enough. Each family had just what it needed. Why? Because God supplied it out of his grace and out of his mercy. This is really cool to me. So verse 19, then Moses told them, do not keep any of it until the morning. So when you go out and you gather your food during the day, don't store it overnight and try and keep it into the next day but verse 20 it says but some of them didn't listen and they kept some of it until morning but by then it was full of maggots and had a terrible smell which I thought was so interesting because truly that's a picture of they were trying to take it into their own hands earlier we read that God was testing them Will you trust me that I'm going to provide for you? Will you trust me that I'm going to give you exactly what you need? I'm going to give you enough. And will you obey me as you trust me, submitting to me? And here we see that they took it into their own hands. They kept it overnight, thinking that they could fend them for themselves, going against God's way and afraid that God would let them down. I really want to encourage you today. Depend on the Lord. Take him at his word. Trust that he will provide. Why? Because that's who he is and that's what he says he will do. He is faithful. Moses was very angry with them because they were going against the way of the Lord. Verse 21, after this, the people gathered the food morning by morning, each family according to its need. There we see it again. And as the sun became hot, the flakes that they had, um, they had picked up and they melted and disappeared. On the sixth day, they gathered twice as much as usual, four quarts for each person instead of two. Then all the leaders of the community came and and asked Moses for an explanation. And I think this is so cool just literally reading through this whole chapter with you because it just goes to show how we really can cast our cares upon the Lord and how attentive the Lord is and how he really does care for us. Each and every day he provided. And on the seventh day, which was made for rest, the people were to stay in their place. They weren't to worry to go out and get their stuff. So on the sixth day, God gave them a double portion. So that on the seventh day, they would have the food that they needed and could rest as they as they took it. 
And so I just, I love getting to go through the scripture verse by verse to show you like how attentive and caring God is. So the people are asking for an explanation right here. Like, okay, on the sixth day, why are we getting a double portion? And what I was just saying is what Moses is about to explain. He told them, verse 23, this is what the Lord commanded. Tomorrow will be a day of complete rest, a holy Sabbath day set apart for the Lord. So bake or boil as much as you want today and set aside what is left for tomorrow. So they put some aside until morning, just as Moses had commanded. And in the morning, the leftover food was wholesome and good without maggots or 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 odor that's hard to say um what i think is really beautiful here is that whenever the people continue to be obedient to god and they continue to trust god they continue to see the provision of god well yes god is gracious and merciful in the midst of their complaining and doing what they they wanted to do i, I find it interesting that whenever they tried to take it into their own hands and store today's food for tomorrow when God had told them not to, their food, their food smelled awful and had a terrible odor and it was filled with maggots because they tried to take it into their own hands. But whenever they submitted to God's word and trusted that he would do what he had said he was going to do, the food was delicious. It was good to eat. There was no odor to it. There was no maggots in it. And I just find that so beautiful, the blessing that comes from trusting God and being obedient to him. Verse 25, Moses says, eat this food today for today is a Sabbath day dedicated to the Lord. There will be no food on the ground today. You may gather the food for six days, but the seventh day is the Sabbath. There will be no food on the ground for that day. And I think it's really sweet right here. We're reading about how the Lord is the provider of food and water and just your, your day to day needs. And also here, I think we're really seeing something so powerful that he is the provider of rest that I love in Mark 2 Jesus says that man was not made for the Sabbath but the Sabbath was made for man like God it says in um I believe it's Psalm 127 where Solomon says like the Lord he gives rest to those that he loves And I think that sometimes we try and go, go, go because we see our worth and our busyness and how much we're getting done, how many boxes we're checking off. And we neglect to rest, whereas rest is actually a provision of the Lord. It's a gift from the Lord. And he's showing his people that. He's showing his people that priority of rest, how God gives it to them and how they actually are blessed as they take it. This is so sweet. It's so sweet. Rest is a good thing, friends. It's a good thing. Verse 27. Some of the people went out anyway on the seventh day, but they found no food. Here we see again, they're not trusting what the Lord had said. They're going in their own way and they're not seeing what they set out to do because they're going against God's way to do it. The Lord asked Moses, how long will these people refuse to obey my commands and instructions? They must realize that the Sabbath is the Lord's gift to you. That is why he gives you a two day supply on the sixth day. So there will be enough for two days. On the Sabbath day, you must each stay in your place. Do not go out to pick up food on the seventh day. So the people did not gather any food on the seventh day. The Israelites called the food manna, which I think is really fun because manna actually means what is it? I always thought of manna being like another word for bread. I had never like looked up what it meant before. But actually, whenever the people had gone out and they saw the flaky substances on the ground and they literally asked, what is it? That's what the name came from, is manna. I thought that was really cool. But it says it was like white, it was like coriander seed, and it tasted like honey wafers. Then Moses says, This is what the Lord has commanded fill a two quart container with manna to preserve it for your descendants. Then later generations will be able to see the food I gave you in the wilderness when I set you free from Egypt. And I think, friends, this is so good. Because he's talking about how later generations will see. They're going to take note of God's provision and testify about it to all future generations. So that the future generations may put their trust in God too. 
You see, at the beginning of our time together today, we were talking about the importance of remembering how God has been faithful, remembering, calling out, writing down, taking note of how God has provided. How has he, how have I tasted and seen that he is good? How have I discovered the fact that I am blessed as I take refuge in him? What miracles have I seen? What have I learned about him? And I'm going to take note of it. And here, God is saying, like, we're going to take this and we're going to put it in a jar so that future generations, when they ask about what's in that jar and why do we have it, we're going to tell them how the Lord provided for us here in the wilderness. How powerful. So I want to encourage you, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. As the Lord works in your life, as you see him provide, as you see him be him, as you see him work in you and through you to bring glory to his name, take note of it. And tell your children, tell your friends, tell generations that are rising behind you so that they may look to the Lord, put their trust in him and walk in obedience to him too. So Moses gives those instructions to Aaron, get a jar and fill it with two quarts of manna, then put it in a sacred place before the Lord to preserve it for all future generations. Aaron did just as the Lord commanded Moses. He eventually placed it in the Ark of the Covenant in front of the stone tablets inscribed with the terms of the covenant. So the people of Israel ate manna for 40 years. 40 years. Every single day, the Lord provided them with exactly what they needed. Isn't that amazing? The Lord doesn't get tired of providing for you. The Lord doesn't run out of supplies. Because his supplies for you are according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus, which are unending. They ate manna until they came to the border of the land of Canaan. The container used to measure the manna was an omer, which was one-tenth of an ephah. It was about two quarts. Friends, the Lord supplies your every single need according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. I want to encourage you with this last thing. That this is grace. Be encouraged that the Lord knows what you need today. And he is faithful to give you what you need today. But like I said, don't worry about tomorrow. Scripture says, for tomorrow is enough trouble of its own. Don't go around God's commands. Don't go around his word to provide for yourself. Trust him. Trust that when he says he will provide each day, he will provide each day. Cast your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Don't be anxious for anything, but in everything with prayer and petition and thanksgiving, submit your request to the Lord. And he who is faithful will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus with peace and provision. Isn't that incredibly encouraging? Friends, I love you so much. I love you so, so much. And I hope that your day is amazing. And whatever circumstance you may be facing, remember how good the Lord is. Remember what he's done and trust that he's the same God today, whatever lies before you. If you are tuning in via Apple or Spotify, be sure to download, rate, review, share it with your people, encourage your people with the word of God. And if you are tuning in via YouTube, be sure and like, subscribe, and comment down below how you were encouraged. Y'all are wonderful, and I can't wait to talk to y'all next week. Bye, guys.